Hello. In this video module, we'll go through the actual data analysis used to complete our acoustic analysis of voice. By now, you should have set up the default settings for Prot and completed our pre-recording sound checks and sound intensity calibration. You should have also recorded the voice samples, which may or may not include the rainbow passage, the Cape V sentences, spontaneous speech, maximum phonation time, maximum pitch glides up and down, maximum intensity ranges, including soft and loud, as well as potentially laryngeal DDKs and S to Z ratio. Okay, so all of that has been previously recorded here. The first thing I'm gonna do is click view and edit. Here is our sound waveform and our spectrogram with our intensity signals in the yellow and our um, pitch uh, contours in blue. We see our settings are in fact correct. So we have 60 and 80 Hertz. Oops, let me just reset that because it just unset. Um, and we have our intensity signals in the blue with the range here from 50 to 100 dB. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is perform our data analysis for our sustained vowel tasks. Um, so this will include our mean habitual fundamental frequency, jitter, shimmer, and harmonic to noise ratio. So the first thing we'll wanna do is find the um, middle couple seconds of a sustained ah uh, sound. So we'll use the sustained ah uh from the Kate V sentences. This looks like it's the Kate V sentences. These look like they're the three vowels um, that we sustain immediately afterwards. So let me zoom in on this and see if this is the ah. Uh, one moment. Uh, perfect. All right, so we can see that I had it at about 1.7 seconds. We will do just a little bit more to get in our two to three second range while avoiding the offset or the onset and the offset of this. We'll go ahead and select uh, select here. Um, and the first thing we'll do is go to pulses voice report. And we'll notice here that we have our um, median pitch, which we'll use. We also have our jitter, our shimmer, and we use the local percentages and our harmonic to noise ratio. So those are our four measures that we um, very quickly and easily get. The next thing we'll do is obtain our mean habitual SPL or um, decibel. And so to do this, we'll exit out of the voice report and we can see the mean db highlighted right here alternatively we could go to intensity get intensity and this will show us 69.02 as well so that is our mean intensity the last thing we'll do is obtain our kebstel peak prominence to do this we'll select file extract selected sound time from zero and we're going to save this as Um, well, it actually already saved. <laughs> um, we'll exit out of this. We'll um, find the file right here. It's the new untitled file. And we're going to rename this as uh, SVs for sustained vowel. And this should be lower caps. We'll then select OK. We'll then select Analyze Periodicity to Power Kepstagram. Our settings should be this, and this should be the default, and that will be okay. So then we'll select okay. Then we'll highlight the power capstogram CV, and then we'll select query get CPPS. Um, we'll want to change our default settings to what we um, to uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. 60, 330.05, 0 .001, 0, 0, and then we'll make this straight and robust. Then we'll select apply and okay. 
And so here we see that our Kepstel peak prominence is 18.49. A couple more of our non-speech measures will be going back to our main audio file. We'll select view and edit. And what we'll do right now is identify our minimum and maximum pitches as well as our pitch range. Sometimes this can take a second to load. So the first thing that we'll wanna do is find where our pitch glides are. This looks like that's the maximum phonation time that I previously recorded. And so these look like these are going to be um, the pitch range tasks here. So let me go ahead and zoom in. Let me verify. We can already see that this looks like it's probably the pitch task, but let me just verify. Uh... Okay, so we can see that there's a little bit of noise artifact because of a pitch break, so we'll want to account for the fact that this probably isn't the true pitch here. Let's verify that it's the descending pitch glide. Uh... Great, and so for both of these tasks, we can see that the highest and lowest pitches were sustained for about two to three seconds, which is what's recommended. You might not always get that. Um, so to... Uh, um, look at our pitches. The first thing we're going to want to do is temporarily change our pitch settings. So we're going to go to pitch settings. We'll change this to something higher. This is going to be especially necessary if you're working with singers. Then we'll select apply and OK. And we can see now that the pitch range was in fact changed to 1300. This didn't affect um, us too much um, because I I'm not going up to 1300 hertz. Um, you'll also notice, however, that with this increased range, we do get a kind of noise artifact in this region here, which we don't want to measure. And this is why we set the um, pitch settings normally to a speaking range of 60 to 800 hertz to avoid a noise artifact like that as much as possible. So to look at our um, maximum pitch, we want to highlight the middle half or um, one second of the maximum and minimum pitches. We can see that the maximum pitch was around 511 hertz, and we can see that the minimum pitch is around 78 hertz. Um, if we didn't have sustained phonation, or if there was lots of noise artifacts, we might just click on a single point um, that looks representative and just use those single measures as well. Um, but here we have um, uh, very little noise artifact and it was relatively well sustained. So we'll just take the average here, 511, and then the average here for minimum, and that's 78. I'm gonna go back, since we're done with our pitch ranges, and we'll change this back to 800, apply, and okay. To look at the pitch range, um, we'll wanna convert this into semitones. Um, and so you'll find a online um, hertz to semitone converter, enter our minimum and maximum ranges, and that'll give us a range in semitones. For our um, couple more of our non-speech tasks, we'll look at decibel range. So here we're going to zoom out a little bit and we'll move on to our soft and loud intensities. It looks like it's probably those right there. Let me move over just a hair. Let me zoom in on these. I believe this is probably soft and loud. It is. Great. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do, just like we did with the um, 
uh, pitch is look at the average uh, minimum intensity and maximum intensity. So here we can see that it's 57.8. If I wanted to use this, because that might be hard to see, we would go to intensity, get intensity, and we again see it's 57.8. We would do the same thing for our maximum intensity. 86.0, which is again what we see right here, 86.1, and that's because that just did some rounding, which we see here, 86.09, so that got rounded up. Um, you'd want to make sure using your SPL calibration to uh, add on top of this a difference of what we measured with our sound level meter with our prop numbers. Um, so I had a difference of about five decibels. So my maximum intensity was in fact closer to um, 91 decibels and the minimum intensity was around 61 decibels. So that's it for our non-speech measures. We'll look at the entire audio clip now, and now we'll do some connected speech measures. So using ASHA guidelines, we'd wanna be using the rainbow passage. You can either use the entire rainbow passage or the first three sentences of the rainbow passage. So this looks like this is probably the rainbow passage here. Let me zoom in on this. Let me play the beginning just to verify. When the sunlight strikes, it is. Let me see if this is the end of it. Beyond the horizon. And it is. So this is the entire rainbow passage of what I recorded. Um, so the first thing that we're going to want to do for our connected speech measure is identify mean SBL. And so here we would um, highlight the entire sample and we can see that the mean SPL is 63.8. Again, just to verify, we see that it's 63.8 decibels. We would add our 5 dB on top of that and have about 68 decibel for the mean dB. Um, the next three measures, um, I'm sorry, the next two measures we'll obtain for connected speech is our mean pitch and our um, standard deviation of pitch or pitch variability. So to do this, we would have our highlighted measure. We would then go to pulses, voice report. We'd want to take our mean or median um, pitch. I'll be using median pitch since we do see, in fact, that there is lots of um, noise artifact in the pitches. We see lots of um, uh, blue uh, really high up. That's not indicative of true voicing. Um, and so we want to try to discard that as much as possible. So we'll use the median pitch here, which was around 101 hertz. We also see that the standard deviation was about 145 hertz. The last thing we want to get for a connected speech is a Kepstel Peak Prominence for Speech. So to do this, just as we did before, we'll go to File, Extract Selected Sound from Time Zero, We'll then exit out of this and we have our new sound untitled file. This is what we just um, just extracted and to verify that we could always push play to verify. So we'll rename this and now we're going to rename it to CS for connected speech. We'll select OK. We'll then do the same process of analyze periodicity to power capstagram. We click OK. We'll analyze this by going to Query, Get CPPS. We see that our settings are all how they should be. So now we'll click OK. Now with longer speech samples, this can take a little bit longer. This was actually relatively quick. Um, but here we can see that the Kepster peak prominence was 7.5. OK, so just a couple more measures. Another really valuable measure to obtain during our acoustic analysis of voice is the AVQI, or the Acoustic Voice Quality Index. And I'll provide a link to the script here and some references for you as well. Um, in order to obtain this measure, we'll need to download a, a script that we'll then input into our prop window. And this is going to utilize the SV and the CS files that we created from the CPP. 
So what we'll do is we'll um, click on Prot at the top of our desktop and we'll collect, um, we'll select new Prot script. We have this window here. We'll have previously downloaded the Prot script from online. We'll then copy and paste the entire script into our script window here. We'll select run, run, and OK. And so this script is using SV and CS specifically, which is why it needs to be renamed those files specifically. <clears throat> we'll give it a couple of uh, minutes and we now have our AVQI right here. So this is an AVQI of 3.01 um, with our output. All right, and last but not least, um, we might um, be interested in using Prot to uh, um, to analyze, help analyze our maximum finition time, our SSC ratio, and our laryngeal DDKs. So you'll open up your WAV file that you previously created, view and edit. So these are not things you have to do on Prot, but I find them to be very helpful. Um, not only is it more reliable, but it's actually quicker than just trying to listen. So if I was to look at maximum finition time, we see that here. I'll zoom in and we can see that the maximum finition time began here and ended right here. And so this tells us immediately that our maximum finition time was 20.7 seconds. If I wanted to look at S to Z ratio, I would do the same thing. I know S to Z ratio was completed at the end of this. I'll verify that this is S and that this is Z, great. So to measure S to Z ratio, we can just find the durations here very quickly, 22.4 seconds, and Z would be 25.3 seconds. And we would do our calculations for S to Z ratio from there. And then if we wanted to look at laryngeal DDKs, um, we would zoom in on our laryngeal DDKs Okay. So this is the first of those two laryngeal DDK casks. I'll zoom in a little bit. Actually, I'll look at the middle three seconds or so, and we see that that was four seconds, so that's fine. I'll select this. And here we can count our waveforms, or we could look at the intensity contours or the pitches to look at the, to count the number of repetitions that we're seeing, and then divide that by the entire visible portion that we just um, outlined. So that's our acoustic analyses. Have fun.